next uh, resource speaker is a landscape architect. She is also a frequent green resource speaker. We are always with her. She will be talking about landscape architecture sustainability from the ground. Her name is architect Marianne Elias Pina, a frequent speaker in green forums, green symposiums, and green seminars. She has a Bachelor of Science in Architecture from the University of San Carlos. She has a Bachelor of Landscape Archite Architecture from the University of the Philippines, and a Master of Landscape Architecture from the University of Massachusetts. She is the 10th placer in the 1976 Architectural Board Exams, a landscape architect and has been an active academician for the past 15 years. She is a 2004 PRC awardee for Outstanding Professional of the Year in Landscape Architecture. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome architect Marianne Espina. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for the intro. It's 2003, not 2004. Okay. Oh. Yes. corrected. <laughs> Somebody might complain. Um, my topic today is um, landscape architecture. Uh, I've shared this in a previous forum with the SMX, uh, sorry, with the SM group of companies. So. Uh, if you had been there during that time, I hope you don't find this too uh, repetitive. So, um, the, to, to start my uh, lecture, to teach you what landscape architecture is about, let me first uh, um, define landscape architecture. It is an art and science of designing the outdoor space for the biological and psychological well-being of man. For many of you who are architects, you know, you can relate to the definition because like architecture, it is also an art and a science. And it's very important to emphasize this because um, um, as a technology, uh, as a professional practice, uh, we have to be proficient in both. So, the art of landscape architecture, similar with architecture, is inspired by nature in the shapes, colors, and textures of plants, rocks, and wildlife, in scale and magnificence of mountains, rivers, lakes, and seas, in sounds. So, take note that we need to include sounds coming from birds, rustling leaves, whistling winds, and further other sensual delights from fragrant flowers and leaves. The science of landscape architecture, unlike architecture, is founded on ecology and natural resources, but supported by engineering, because architecture is founded on engineering. Okay. Now, I'd like to present landscape architecture in the context of the process called site planning, whereby we look at definitions uh, that uh, says site planning is the art of arranging structures on land and shaping the spaces between. Uh, Harvey Rubenstein has a, a greater uh, definition that says it is the art and science of arranging the uses of portions of land. So in the process of site planning, we need to take stock of natural physical data of the site. And this is really the, the education on uh, sustainable design principles will be most uh, useful. Uh, after taking stock of the data of the site, we analyze and synthesize this data. We make important decisions about the site. And uh, in, in the process of solving problems of the site, we form a space program and ultimately a master physical development plan. And it is in, the, in this development plan where we can um, 
exercise and uh, apply the principles of sustainable design. Um, in in UP, to my students, I always say that at the minimum, these are the following factors to consider. Natural factors, including geology, geomorphology, hydrology, vegetation, wildlife, and climate. Um, I'd like to say that it's very important that we know that these are the minimum factors to consider because when we talk about sustainable design later, you find out that they exactly comprise uh, the, the knowledge in sustainable design. We also um, talk about cultural factors and very familiar among architects, uh, existing land use, traffic and transit, density and zoning, etc. So these are the, the factors uh, pertaining to the man-made laws that uh, that affect us when we make uh, our decisions on the site plan. And uh, lastly, we, we uh, input aesthetic factors including natural features, spatial patterns, and visual resources. Now, after uh, doing a site analysis, um, the development of design concepts will follow. In architecture and landscape architecture, the design concept comes as a product of talent, experience, sensitivity, and deep research. So a concept in general is an abstract idea associated with a corresponding representation. In design, this representation is space, form, and order. Most importantly, a concept is a bearer of meanings. Now, let me just uh, say again, a concept is our product as a designer. It is a product of our creativity. Later on, when we talk about principles, <laughs> the definition will be different. But let me run you through some design concepts in landscape architecture. Some concepts can be playful with whimsical and artsy. So you begin to play with colors and textures and forms in the landscapes. Um, landscape architecture is always sensory, where even just a photograph of Sampagita already gives you the, the smell. You know, you can practically uh, sense the fragrance of Sampagita. You can almost touch these uh, tufts of grass on the ground. Landscape architecture design can be space defining and space forming. So this picture shows you uh, a space that's neither indoor or outdoor. It's very difficult to tell whether you're indoors or outdoors, but a very, very clever um, composition of forms that uh, allows the indoors to merge with the outdoors. Um, well, this is architecture, and even in landscape architecture, design can be thematic or literal. And the most literal translation of an animal form in, a, in architecture is this uh, hotel uh, uh, inspired by the figure of uh, allig alligator perfectly because uh, one enters the, the body through the mouth okay, and, um, and goes up to the second floor through the legs and uh, I, I suppose the back of the house is found in the tail. Design concepts may be philosophical when we say form follows function, uh, a principle associated with modern architecture in the 20th century that states that the shape of a building or object should be predicated or based on its intended function or purpose. But I show you this picture of a uh, cactus plant and sometimes we shift the concept to function follows form. This is a model, it's not a real building yet, but a model of a building where they follow the form of a cactus uh, plant. Uh, upon close-up, you'll see that the building is made up of several uh, superimposed uh, uh, balconies. Uh, I'm afraid that I won't be able to uh, encourage you to do the same because uh, in the Philippines, we have intensive uh, rainfall, so we can't uh, really take care of uh, overexposed balconies like this.